Amazon, Google, Intel, AMD, aside from being tech behemoths, they all have one thing in common. They run on tech developed by a company you've likely never heard of, at least until recently, following a $60 billion IPO. That company is the UK-based Arm Holdings, a semiconductor and software design company known in the tech industry for its CPU cores and chips. To give you a sense of their dominance, Arm's chip designs have been manufactured over 250 billion times, and their CPUs enable advanced computing in a mind-boggling 99% of smartphones globally. In fact, half of all chips with processors are Arm-based. But that's not all. To market participants, their $60 billion IPO led by industry giants such as Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan is expected to unfreeze the taps and usher in a new wave of highly anticipated go public transactions. Let's dive in. Let's begin with the basics. Who is ARM? Arm Holdings, which calls itself the brain of everything, is the architect, developer, and licensor of high-performance, low-cost, and energy-efficient CPU products. Their name stands for Advanced RISC Machines, which is the style of design specific to their tech. Weirdly enough, Arm does not manufacture chips, nor does it have the ability to manufacture chips. Instead, they solely focus on designing the chips before licensing the tech out to various industry participants. ARM chips are popular because they use RISC architecture for their processors, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. To understand why their chips are so popular, we must first discuss the chip landscape. There are two major types of architecture, one being RISC and the other being x86, which Intel and AMD designed. Typically, chips that use x86 are optimized for specific functions and are mainly used in computers. Meanwhile, ARM chips are lightweight, more energy efficient, create less heat, and compute a highly optimized set of instructions, making them ideal for portable devices. And in a world relying on smartphones and portable devices, that means ARM is a king when it comes to the semiconductor space. ARM's dominant role within the semi-space resulted in full-year revenues of $2.6 billion for 2022 as per their S1 filing, which was made in connection with their IPO. And thanks to their licensing model, gross profits were an eye-popping 96% of revenue, or $2.5 billion. Net income for the last two years, meanwhile, has hovered around the $500 million mark. But there's plenty of blue sky. Arm estimates that its total addressable market for its chips is $203 billion and growing. To hear SoftBank's Messasan tell it, Arm is the next Nvidia and a core beneficiary of the AI revolution. But he might be a little biased given SoftBank's purchase of Arm in 2016. The company, which had been public since 1998, was taken private under a $32 billion deal with a portion placed into one of SoftBank's vision funds. More recently, SoftBank bought out several investors at an implied valuation of 64 billion, double what it initially paid, ahead of the go public transaction, which saw the fund sell just 10% of ARM to the public. For Sun, the problem with the AI revolution is that Nvidia is the clear winner among semiconductor developers. This is evidenced by Nvidia's $1 trillion valuation. ARM chips are largely used in phones and other portable devices, not those brilliant computers that do generative AI. This has led to many commentators stating that the bar for making high quality smartphone chips is actually much lower than it is for making the chips that are used in the AI industry. For what it's worth, the company claims that its CPUs are already running some degree of AI related workloads in smartphones, cameras, cars, and more, but still, these aren't the chips that are being used in data centers to power ChatGPT. Now, if you like ARM as your pick for the AI revolution, there's another problem you gotta know about. As per filings, ARM China accounts for roughly 24% of total revenues. Now, this normally wouldn't be an issue outside of the whole thing going on between China and America regarding the chip war, but ARM only owns 5% of the subsidiary, and they have no direct management rights or board representation. Not exactly reassuring for the future performance of the company. But to pretend it's all doom and gloom in terms of outlook is pointless. The company has valuable tech, and it's noteworthy that it's working with companies like Alphabet, Cruise, Mercedes-Benz, and even competitor Nvidia to develop chips that can run AI workloads, among other developments. And if Nvidia had things its way, ARM would already be a subsidiary of Nvidia. In fact, years ago, as the pandemic was getting into 
full swing in September of 2020, the company motioned to acquire Arm, offering $40 billion to SoftBank in the Vision Fund. Consideration was to consist of $21.5 billion in Nvidia stock, $12 billion in cash, plus some cash to Arm employees and earnout provisions. At the time, it amounted to 44.3 million pre-split shares of Nvidia that were to be issued in connection with the deal. Today, those shares would be worth roughly $73 billion. Unfortunately for SoftBank and Maya Sun, the deal was called off in February 2022, with both parties citing regulatory challenges as the cause. On the topic of SoftBank, this IPO is extremely important for the fund and its CEO, Masayoshi Sun. Mass and SoftBank were celebrated as the king of investors during the bull market in recent years as people watched SoftBank's investments double and triple. But that was an era of cheap money, and that era is now over. And its end has dramatically brought down SoftBank's reputation with it. Take WeWork, for instance, another major investment by the fund. The office-based leasing company saw over $18 billion put into it by Sun in 2020, at a valuation of $47 billion. Now public, the company is worth a depressing $270 million after incinerating billions of dollars of capital. SoftBank was also an investor in large Asian corporations, such as Kupang, South Korea's answer to Amazon, which is down nearly 40%. Also, we have Didi, China's ride-hailing company, which has fallen even further, down roughly 70%, partly because of that country's crackdown on its tech giants. Collectively, these poor performances has led to over $50 billion of losses for SoftBank within the last two years, and an identity crisis for a fund that built itself on a so-called 300-year plan. What this translates to is SoftBank relying on ARM to rebuild its image among investors. And for that, a successful IPO and post-IPO performance is crucial. And for any private company looking for some liquidity in the public markets, they're obviously rooting for the ARM IPO to be a smashing success. And quite frankly, it's shaping up to be one. ARM's IPO was the largest in the US since electric vehicle maker Rivian's $13.7 billion offering back in October of 2021. And it could rank near or even just below the tech industry's largest ever IPOs, which includes Alibaba Group Holdings' $25 billion 2014 offering and 2012's $16 billion debut by Facebook, or today known as Meta Platforms. This is exactly what private companies are looking to hear right now, not only because they want to go public and enjoy Enjoy some juicy fresh new capital from investors, but also because many of their employees have had a portion of their total compensation in equity. These private companies being able to give employees a liquidity event would allow them to turn their effective zero equity compensation into real cash, which will help them pay for everyday things such as groceries and even possibly a new house. And it seems like the IPO is doing just that. As recently as last Friday, marketing automation firm Clavio and grocery delivery service Instacart filed documents with the SEC to go public. And these are only two of the more anticipated public offerings. Birkenstock, Sheen, Reddit, and Discord are among the other highly anticipated IPOs that could be happening in the near term. There haven't really been that many hot stocks over the last year, and quite frankly, it's just a handful of stocks that have made up all the gains for the S&P over the last year. But one of the names that has driven the broad market is Nvidia. Thus, any company that is within a stone's throw of being a reasonable comp to this company is probably going to want to take advantage of it. And here we are with ARM. Is it a buy, a hold, a sell? Well, that's up to you to decide. But I think if you think that this AI rally is in its early innings, ARM could be a nice stock to own if you're looking for a basket of AI related players. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.